Howdy uh, here and welcome to Nev's Gaming. Wow, it has been a while. How are you doing? I know I'm doing fantastic dozy. Well, I am doing fantastic dozy. Do you want to know why? Why? It's because we are making a lot of steel. A lot of steel. Why are we making this steel? Because we need power. Why is there a zombie piglin? Why is there two zombie piglins? Oh, Lord. Looks like zombie piglins are coming to say hello through the portal. And it's getting night time. So I'm going to take a quick sleep. Oh, always, it's always night time when I start the episodes. It's always night time. So as I was saying, after I had a quick little nap to make it daytime, we are going to need a lot of steel. Why is this? Because we're going to need more power. But what does steel and power have in common? Well, it's steam. Steam is what I require today. So in this episode, we're going to be making some steam turbines. If we look down here, we need all these items. Turbine blades. We need the rotational complex, electromagnetic coil, casing, valves, vents, saturation condensers. Well, we need all that. And each one requires some sort of steel. So uh, that's what we are going to be making in this episode. Why do I need steam? For more power. Because if you remember, in the last episode, I have started doing the outside of this. I've chosen to do obsidian, and it's come out rather well. It actually stands out compared to the other buildings, which I wanted to achieve. We are going to go in here and have a look. With one quick open of the chest, let's have a look inside. Oh, look at that. We're full of ores. Why? And even in the second chest, why? Because of this wonderful, wonderful invention right here. But the trouble is, it uses a lot of power. Even with our power storage system over there, it's still not producing enough. I've linked it all up underground. As you can see there, there's a power cable running straight down. But it just simply isn't enough to sustain it for a long period of time. So what are we going to do about that? Well, this is where the turbines come in. The steam-powered turbines. They should produce enough energy, or better energy for us in order to make the ores that we require for all the future items. Now, I'm hoping the amount of steel that we have will be enough because if we go, if we check the uh, how to make the actual turbine, you'll see here that we require steel, an enriched alloy, we require steel and osmium, again, more steel and tinning it for the saturation condensers. So that is a lot of steel. Where am I going to build this turbine, you're asking yourselves? Well, let's head over to the rear again, because this is where our power distribution is going to be. I'm going to have it situated just on the edge, right next to the battery power here. So when we upgrade this and increase the size of the battery, we will increase the size of the energy input. When we move on to nuclear power, and when we move on to fission power, and then when we move on to taking over the world. Okay, that was a bit um, too uh, forceful. I do apologize about that. But uh, basically, I'm going to make all the steam turbine stuff and start building. So the first thing I did was collect all my steel that I've created from there. The next thing I did was start making some turbine casing. Next, I moved on to making the casing. Uh, the Sorry, the advanced. No, moving on to the turbine valves where you get two per creation. I then moved on to making the turbine blades and turbine rotary. Next, the rotary complex was created. We only needed one of those. Next, we needed some pressure dispersers. Next is the electromagnetic coil, which involves gold and lovely, lovely energy tablets, which require more gold to create make. Finally, the saturation condensers. So I've actually been away for a couple of days and um, yeah, I've logged back onto the server and there seems to be a lot of mobs around. If we go check outside here, you'll see that there is actually a lot of pigment about and that is because of this. My end portal seems to be letting them all spawn in. I wonder if I hit one of these will they all come after me even though it's night time. <laughs> yeah, they still come after me. That was probably a bad idea, but I can take them out. Nice and easy. Without a worry. Where's he gone? Oh, oh. Oh, oh no, we've got a little one. Now they're all taken care of. Oh, we got a gold nugget with that. Let's have a sleep, make it daylight again, and start building this turbine. Now, as I fly around as a bat, 
I just want to stop here and show you the progression that we've got on the turbine so far. And I just wanted to break it down just a little bit. So in order to have a five high bladed turbine, we need to make it seven wide. So it's like five plus two. That gives it enough room for the blades to actually turn. But I just wanted to talk through what we've actually got here. So starting off, we've got the turbine casing. Now, the thing needs to be made out of this, and as you can see here, it's got to be in the corners and be that structural. It also has to be covered on top as well. Next, to have stuff coming in and out, we want the turbine valve. That'll have your power going out, that'll have the water going out. You don't need to set it to anything because it'll just pick it up depending on what's attached to it. Next, we've got the structural glass. Make sure it's structural glass, otherwise it won't work. Reactor glass will not work, so make sure it is structural glass. Moving on to the next layer, you're going to need one of these on top of the turbine in the center. Right there. And this is the rotational complex. What you'll see is you'll see these turbine rotors. Come back. As I was saying, these turbine rotors attach to this and they'll go all the way down to the bottom. Uh, that is not what I want to do. There we have it. Above that, uh, sorry, surrounding this, you'll need these pressure dispersers. Uh, they have to be on the level of this rotational complex. That's how it works best, I've found. Moving on top of that, you need the electromagnetic coils. Now, you only need one of these, but obviously, try and fill the layer because you will it's just better for the turbine. Moving on top of that, we have the saturation condenser. The reason why we have these is so we can turn the water that is from here back into... Uh, sorry, the steam that is in here back into water and exiting out of these turbine vents. The more vents you have, the better it will be. Right, I'll finish the build off now and uh, hopefully it should work. Well, with the noisy little rawr, 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 growl from my uh, zombie villagers here, which will get transformed in the future, we have finally made the turbine. Now, because it's five high, as I was saying, it needs to be seven wide to give it enough turbine spinning space for the blades up there. If we click here, you'll see that it has a capacity of that much and a max flow of that much. I'm not going to try and pronounce that number because I'll probably get it wrong. But I'm glitching out because I was a bat. I was flying around, and I, yeah, that's what happens. But my hat stays in the same place, so just look at the hat and try not to have an epileptic fit. Oh, no. Right. How are we going to get the steam in there? Well, there's a few ways we can do that. We can either make a, a reactor core and do it that way, but I'm not going to do that yet because I've got nowhere to store the actual reactor fuel, and if we break it or move it, it'll explode, and it'll cause this area to go reactive, and I'll get scared. I'll be like, ah, oh, no, I'll be shaking the way I am now. But we're not going to do that. No, 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 no. We're going to make a boiler. While I'm waiting to get all the materials to make the boiler, I just thought I'd look at the four times in ore process again. It is absolutely fantastic. Just look at the flow of it. Look at the speed of it. Absolutely amazing. As we wait here, you can see that I'm needing more steel once again. So we are now waiting for the steel to produce. And it is producing very rapidly thanks to the internal upgrades. Right. I've got the goodies to build this now. We've got everything we require in my hand here. So let's build this boiler.
Então vai lá. O Amboila. I think. Has it worked? Yes, there it goes. There's the boiler. Absolutely amazing. Got boiling temperature that boiler. Oh lord, it's night time. I've just completed the boiler and realised I've got googly eyes on. How and why have I got googly eyes? Can someone tell me that? Like... I've got googly eyes on. <laughs> why have I got googly eyes? Oh. Is it... Is, I don't know why I've got googly eyes. That is very strange. <laughs> I don't know where that's come from. That's so random. <laughs> Anyway, the as you can see, the boiler behind me is now completed. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Anyway. Oh, mad. Madness. Uh, we now just need to fill this thing with a bit of water to create the steam, feed the steam into here, and then start regenerating and pumping it back into here, having everlasting water and steam. Uh, but then this thing's also going to need a heating element and power. That's how much water it can intake. That's how much steam it can output. And we haven't quite got there yet. Fan, Dabby Dozy. Right, time to work this one out, how to get this thing started. Okay, right, I have here, if we look, we've got two resistive heaters giving this a heat. As you can see, that's going up nice and lovely. As we know, in order to heat, we'll go to thingy, in, in order to heat water, it's 100 degrees Celsius. And as these heat up slowly, these will produce enough heat in order to turn this into gas. And once we turn that into gas, we just need to transport the gas into here. And then once we these turbines spin, we can use condense it and do it, have it in a loop, going round and round. So we can have the uh, the water going back out of there, back into here, and have jobs are good in. Uh, so we just need these as the initial input. So if I do this now, there we have it. That is slowly going to pump the water and fill this up nice and slowly as we can see here ah there we go look at that we're going to see the water slowly increase up and as you can see there the temperature is going to slowly increase up as time goes on with these resistive heaters now we don't need a lot we just need enough to get it to 100 degrees so we can start producing steam and there we have it we've got a steam with a boil rate of five currently at the max temperature obviously with me produce more we if we add more heaters to this uh, we will be able to produce more steam but for now we need to figure out how to get the steam out and it should start filling up the top there as you can see it's getting a bit little little bit hazy at the top and the reason I'm flying around again just remind you is I'm not in creative mode I am a bat so now we need to figure out how to get all this steam out we've got well three buckets full at the minute and I need to transfer it into here so the thought was I used a basic pressurized tube, but for some reason this is not working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this and I'm going to move the valve up at the top and then feed it through like so. Well, we have connected all the piping up. Let's go take a quick look at how it's all working. We've got our external pipe here coming through to give these thermodynamic generators more power in order to boost there with a little bit of an extra boost from these windmills here which is also powering the pumps for the water supply which is going in here which is now full and we're now turning it in steam because we have reached the required temperature of 100 degrees fortunately the steam production is very very slow at this minute in time but we can um, increase that uh, when we do the nuclear well the fission reactor that'll increase the steam production now we've only got one more pipe to actually produce now after a lot of research and a few help from a few friends we figured that we can't transfer the steam via a gas pipe even though that is the logical option here we have to do it with a fluid pipe don't question it it works let's just accept it so let's add this final pipe and see where we go from there bosh as you can see it's all a bit grayed out there now and if we click this button you should see that we are producing a little bit of power in fact we're losing power why are we losing power the flow rate because we're not producing enough steam oh maybe we need to increase the if we look here as well if we have a look here I've actually got it coming back on itself so we will never run out of water if we take sneaky quick under you can see it comes out the vents there hence why we got the, uh, the condensers earlier 
they'll come out, fill back, they fill this back up, so we don't have to worry about running out, out of water. Oop, there we go, big jump over. So we've another cheeky little look in here. Oh, it looks like it's leveling out a little bit now. So yeah, we are still losing power and losing buckets of steam there. It looks like not enough is being produced by this here. So we can actually change that by increasing the power. So if we go 500 maybe on this, you'll see the temperature rise there. But again, it'll use a load more power. 500, if we do that again, it'll utilize a lot more power. As you can see here, it's needing 5RF, 5U, 5T, 5 kilojoules depends what we want to produce now whoop. now these windmills are only producing 80 KRF while these are using now 500 RF which is just not good but we are producing a little bit more steam so we need more power and we need more heat hence why we will be moving on to the fusion reactor next time for more power but I'm going to end the episode there I hope you're enjoying yourselves as we delve into this mechanism mod on the pack I've been Nevs Gaming, you've been amazing, toodaloo, and I'll see all you wonderful people in a few. Good.